I want to open up with a few scriptures, and the reason why I want to do that is because it's important for us to uh, find ourselves in the, in the Bible, meaning our progress, our, uh, our actions or our activism is actually outlined in the Bible, and I want to let you know where we are in the Bible, okay? We often... Read Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and like I pointed out on one of the last classes I taught about it, was that this particular chapter is talking about our time now. The valley of the dry bones, the valley of death, like you read in uh, Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that valley is where we are in America, valley of death. If you think about it, America with all its glitz and glamour, with its 42nd Times Square lights and glimmer and all of that, America is actually, the idea, let me put it that way, the idea of America is actually resting on top of a graveyard. What I say when I say it's a graveyard, it might come at a shock to some of us because we have been so socialized into the whole uh, spirit of America. I'm talking about us as we're born and we grow up and we've learned all of the ways of Babylon. We tend to forget the real history about what this country was about. And 1619 and what they call CRT or critical race theory is, is somewhat of a reminding uh, truth that says what this country is really about. Therefore, you have people that are totally against it because they say, well, listen, we're trying to keep people asleep. Here you come waking up, waking up the waking up the people and letting letting them know what this is really about. So that was what a lot of the controversy around about that is all about. But the reality is what it is. So we being the disobedient of our of of the of being the disobedient Israelites of the Most High, the Most High cast us into this graveyard basically for our punishment. Therefore shall the Lord uh, send, this, his in, send our enemies against us, which, which shall put a yoke of iron on our neck, and we have to serve cap captivity here. So this is the reality of what happened, and it happened in this graveyard called America. This is it. This is the place that is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. This is where we are. So being that we are here, we've been made asleep in lies, drunk with lies, drunk with foolishness, and... When that be the case, the Most High sent his spirit back on us when you read the book of Malachi, and he speaks about us. Uh, he said that the spirit of the, he said that, the, that he would visit us through the spirit of Elijah, and he would turn the heart of the fathers back to the, back to the children and turn the children's mind back to our fathers, which is the Bible, the book of our fathers, right? So as that's happening, there's some wake up coming in. Not only is there a wake up coming in in terms of who we are as a people, but also there's a wake up come is there's a wake up concerning us about where we are. That this is not a utopia of the Most High. That this is in fact the graveyard where our far, where our forefathers and foremothers were murdered and 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 basically dumped in pits, and then they put concrete and and buildings on top of it and said, "Come learn about Jesus." And 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 in our confusion. We never really uh, focus on that fact. We actually thought it was okay. So, I say that to say this here. And I will wake up even before our people began to learn about the Bible. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, gives the stages of our wake up. And it's talking about us in this country here. This parallels with what I'm about to read also out of Revelation. Uh, Officer Nishan, right? Give me Revelation 11 and 8. I'm going to be quick with these scriptures, and then we're going to, I'm going to bring out the facts in terms of why I'm talking about this particularly today. Uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is this graveyard that I was talking about. Read it again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, Go ahead. which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Read. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues 
and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. And shall 350 not years. Uh, Deacon Ithon, I believe it was his class that pointed out the 350 years that it tied from 19, I mean, from 1619 to uh, 1969, right? There's your 350 there, if my math is on point. So that is, that is pivotal, super pivotal. And there's a reason why the Most High focused on that 1619 thing, and then you had 1969 when they went to the moon, and once they did that, the Most High said, thence will I bring you down. So that was their time limit that he cannot pass. I'm talking about Job 14, 4, and 5, right? So as these being the realities of what's going on in the system, there's some wake up that needs to that's taking place among the among the people. It took place during the time of the sixties, and I want to reflect on that for just a second. So uh, read, read on, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Why? Because this not only is America a physical graveyard, because the bones of our forefathers are literally underneath these buildings, up underneath these college campuses, uh, uh, underneath these churches, and. And, and magnificent centers and so forth. There's blood down here in, in, in the soil. So that's the reality. And we've been, we've been socialized and may, been made drunk to forget about that. As we drive our sports cars and build our homes, and, uh, there's bodies up underneath these places. And nobody's really thinking about the efforts that it took to move these people off these very spots. What methods were used to move them? That's not even really paid attention to because of the stupor that we've been subjected to in this country, right? So these are the realities that, that has happened to the nation of Israel. So in this situation that's going on, in the 60s, you had our brothers that were trying to get it together. They didn't have the Bible like, like we have it today, but they were trying. And when that happened, an effort to put them back to sleep with the 70s where the dope was being pushed into our communities, right? So that was, to put, that was to put the lights out of the glimmer of wake up during the 60s. So that's what was happening then. So now after the 70s came the 80s, the 90s. Now we are coming back as Israel trying to get another stab at it again. This time we have the truth. And when we have the truth now, what happens? Now social media starts putting out filth, putting out uh, frolic, foolishness, nudity, perversion, all types of stuff. And our people are right back again getting tied up into it, mainly dealing with our youth, trying to send their minds back to the dirt and back to the filth of what happened to us in the 60s when they pumped the dope in our communities. It's a repetitive cycle. That's my point that I'm bringing up. Y'all all right? Read uh, that verse again about the graves. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Go ahead. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Because we are spiritually dead. On top of the physical death of our brothers and sisters that were murdered here, there's a spiritual death of us not even being cognizant of the dead brothers and the dead sisters that's up underneath these blocks. So there's a whole, there's a whole effort to keep us in evil, to keep us in sin, to keep us in wickedness. There's a, just like back then, they uh, used dope to put our people back to sleep when it was wake up. The most, the, one of the most bloodiest violent era was the 60s. You know, you, 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 I'm talking about countless, le countless conscious leaders were put to death, murdered in open plain sight because the whole objective was to get rid of that glimmer of wake up even back then. And once that happened, drugs came, pushed in, and wiped out whole sections. Of, of the communities. Like I, like I said, I came up when heroin was big. Junkies in the alleys with, 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 with needles stuck in their arms overdosed. I've seen that. That's heroin addicts, dope addicts, and all of this kind of stuff. And what happened as a result of that? The, the communities went totally down, down, down. So that was a concerted effort by our enemies. That was during the 60s. Now there's a new wave of degeneracy with the perversion of, of how, how they work on our young minds, how they work on our young brothers, how they work on our young sisters to cause them to pollute themselves, to cause them to not see the vision that they're supposed to see, to stand up to be righteous men and women so that we can take this nation to way the most high intend for us to do it. So, again, it's another effort 
to retard the progress of Israel. Okay? So it's not, this is not by whim. This is actually by design. And we try to, and we try to, uh, to instill vision in you young men, try to instill vision in you young women. There's a reason for that. Because without the, when, when there is no vision, everybody perishes, including you. So we have to have righteousness at the center as the frontlets in our mind to keep us straight. Okay, but again, there's an effort to turn our brothers and sisters into lascivious uh, um, act, act, activists. Go ahead, Deacon. But, uh, yeah, even though when you pay attention to, to what the media is, is pushing, mm -hmm. it's a disturbing. But uh, what happened to our people is we caught up in the twins of it, but not realize uh, and subconsciously you being programmed to even react. Sometimes you thinking it's you doing it. You know I mean, like uh, you, you never heard it of uh, addiction. The way we say it, this thing is addicted. There's nothing in life is addicted. It's a behavior. You learn the behavior mm -hmm. watching TV, watching cartoon, watching all these things. Now you old enough. To know better, you're like, yo, this thing here, now they start to active on you. The things you want to see, that's what these things start to react to. Self-consciously, you thinking it's you. Now that's not you. You've been programmed to win these thing out. That's why, that's why when you're looking at spiritual words is coming out, these young sisters, these young brothers, man, these young men, and uh, they're not getting it. Why they're not getting it? Because self, uh, self, what is it? Self-consciously. Yeah, uh, now subconsciously it's been programmed. Now us coming back as a people into Christ, all these things we have to just sit back. Yeah, I mean, like, like I see people just get up in the morning. Yeah, I mean, you jump about the eight hours you're about to put in. You jump about the 12 hours you're about to put in. Nowhere at the end of the day, I see why when you open the Bible, you find yourself sleeping. Why you find yourself sleeping? Because your whole mindset is to focus and get them in his money. Then by the time you focus on yourself, is that is the two hours you got before you go to sleep, back again to the sleep mode. But these media outlets, they're created for a reason. That's why you guys don't understand. But like Bishop just saying, they they bring the drugs, they bring the guns. Now they bring the media. You understand? So to uh, MTV, BET, uh, uh, what, what, uh, Twitter, uh, yeah, TikTok, YouTube. You understand? Instagram. All these things are device. If you don't know, if you're not wise, you're not going to use it wisely. Because there is evil in you. There is already evil in you to do. That's why I say in the heart of man, perceive all evil thoughts. Because guess what? This, the Bible, the Bible, the one that's going to control all these evil. Like I give you an example, right? When you have an iPhone, right? An iPhone comes with a book. The person that makes the iPhone, the reason he writes the books, he's going to tell you about the iPhone. You know, when you read the iPhone, when you read the book, you're able to... Turn the iPhone on and knowing that what the iPhone you got. God likewise. God create human. He say, hey, hey, this is this is the book. That's why there is no such a thing in the Bible you heard time out. Why, why you don't see time out there? What God said, beat him in the side. Is a reason. Why he made he tell you how to control it. But when you left that, you understand, you go in your own mind and your own white man philosophy, you're gonna lose the point. Because this is what's supposed to guide you. Then your young sisters, you understand? Yeah, you know what's so funny about your young sisters? You're thinking you're more smarter than God. Give me five minutes. I'll talk to you for five minutes. I'll tell you what kind of things you insist. Any one of you. Give me five minutes of your time. I'll tell you what your problem is. I'll tell you what you're into and what you're not into. You understand? Because I study these things. I, I pay attention to people's emotion and people's feelings. That's what this whole society is about, people. Don't, don't give in to it. It's all about feeling in your emotion. I just want to feel good for the moment. I just want to see a lot of luck. Oh, how many people lack? That type of mindset you will destroy. You will be destroyed with the mindset. Go ahead, Bishop. All praises. Now, in order for us, 
when we talk about the kingdom of heaven, right? The scriptures say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth. So the change is going to happen on this planet. And when I often talk about, like, for instance, when brothers and sisters get married, one of the points that I always make about when, when the two come together, I said that you two have the uh, potential and the ability to create a nation. Because the two of you, you bring in children. When you bring children in, they are carrying, they, they have the potential to carry the, the seeds of thought to change the entire planet. That's how important that union between the, that man and that woman is. So things have to be done right. That's why I say these women are not a plaything when I talk to you brothers. I'd say to you sisters, you're not, you're not to be playing with these men. When you, when you look to choose a man, make sure that his mind is right according to the scriptures. Same thing with you men. Y'all, because the two of y'all coming together is about bringing righteousness in this earth. You can come together and produce fools and drug addicts and criminals, or you can produce the prophets of God. You can produce princesses of, of the Most High. You can do that, but it depends on the mind state of the two of you coming together as one. So if we're not looking to do that, there's no need to be talking about going up nobody's skirt, going in his pants. There's no need to be talking about none of that at all. And that's wicked as hell, and that's exactly the reason why we have what we have out here in society. Like I said before, the way to put our, to put our people back to sleep before was through the dope and the drugs. Now it's through lasciviousness, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that madness. And once you get tied up into that thing, your thought process change, and then you begin to normalize wicked behavior. And, next, and the next thing you know, now you're being asked questions as to why this kind of behavior is coming from you, why this kind of behavior is coming from this one. And you're clueless because you don't see that you've been, you've been guided by evil. So the change has to start with our children. And this is the reason why we make so much of an issue when it comes to you younger men and you young women. I was having a uh, conversation with Bishop uh, not long ago, and I was talking about the difference between our generation, meaning in this truth, and the generation that's coming up behind us. We, because br- prior to us, you didn't really have, before this truth came out, I was just using one West days. Before this truth really hit, there was no real, real super talk as you hear about Israel in the street now. That came from the camp that me and Bishop came from. You follow what I'm saying? And that same uh, thought process is coming all the way down. IUIC is basically the one that's carrying that torch in righteousness. We learned the, we learned the uh, proper scriptures to, to further this truth. The water's rising. That's my point. Back, back in the old school, we had a certain level of understanding. It was correct, but it wasn't nowhere near as deep as it is now. The most high, it caused our understanding to increase as the waters increase when you read Ezekiel 47. That's what I'm talking about. So it increased. So as that knowledge increased there, we also learned how to deal with families. We also learned how to deal with children, sons and daughters. We learned how to do these things. But prior to that, there was no real knowledge going on. Our brothers in the 60s didn't know this, but they had a glimmer of wake up. And even with that glimmer of wake up, our enemies sought to destroy us by pumping dope. Now the glimmer of, uh, of wake up is with us. Now we have the Bible. So what is the, uh, what is the other dope? Social media, going to, your, going to your schools, your jobs, and all you hear is filth and wickedness. And if you entertain that, you start acting just like these people in the world, but yet you're coming in here with your purple and gold. That's wicked as hell, and that's not what the Most High is looking for. All right? Give me Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, we're going to read 4 to 9. Eze- then I'm going to turn it to you, Captain. Read. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 4. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Go ahead. This breath was this this breath here was just waking up. I'm a man. I'm no longer a nigger. I'm no longer a a a negro. That's when we were starting to wake up. This is the sixties now. Black, black is beautiful. James Brown, I'm black and I'm proud. All of that kind of talk was back then. You had different groups, music groups, actors, Fred Williamson and so forth. They weren't doing these, these dumb movies that you see today. These brothers had real consciousness in their mind. And even Fred Williamson said that the 12 tribes of Israel were black. There was glimmers of wake up even then. 
But as a whole, it wasn't nowhere near out there. So what am I saying? We today is basically the first real wave of passing this straight up truth to our youth. Passing the straight up truth to our sons and daughters. The the torch is being given to you to set the bound to set the uh to set the the standard straight. So whenever we don't see things operating properly in you, that causes alarm. And this is the reason why we have to deal with the deal deal with the situation that we deal with. So read. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you. Go ahead. And will bring up flesh upon you. So the most uh, sinews is the joints is bringing the ligaments and the bones together, making a full skeleton. And he said, what? And, and he, will, said, he said, I will lay sinews upon you. Because remember, this chapter was about just bones being thrown in the valley. That's basically our mentality. We have no idea that, that our brothers are right next to us. We have, a, a, we have a basically a graveyard of scattered bones all over the place. Some heads over here, some back bones over here, some tibias, uh, fingers, uh, uh, femurs. These are different bones of the skeleton. Ribs over there, all scattered about and have no idea how these bones are to be assembled. Read that again, and I will lay. And I will lay sinews upon you. S sinews of the joints that bring the bones together to make that skeleton. But even with the skeleton being made, you can see that the skeleton forms a human body. But that's all you know at this point. You don't know what nationality or nothing. So the Most High is bringing the skeleton together. That's the nation of Israel. Read. And we'll bring up flesh upon you. And I will bring up nationality on us. I'm black and I'm proud. Some of us found out that we was Israel. Read. And cover you with skin. And cover you with skin to, to recognize that we are the Israelites by face. Go ahead. And put breath in you. And I will put breath in you. Read. And ye shall live. And ye shall live. So now we are standing up. I'm black and I'm proud. Martin Luther King. Uh, Malcolm X, Mega Evers, uh, the different brothers that was back then that was trying to bring this truth forward in the 60s. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. So when you, when, so when you see the, the era of the 60s, that's here in the Bible. They didn't even know that they were in the Bible. Our brothers, our fathers, our mothers, with, the, with that, with that uh, serious movement that they were doing they did not realize that they themselves were in the bible go ahead so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and the bones came together the bo bu bus uh boy bus the bus what was it the boycott of the buses uh the black panthers that's the noise that's what's happening here this part here is talking about the the shaking that we were shaking up that's what this is talking about. Read that again. So I prophesied. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together. And the bones came together and stood up. I'm but, proud. I'm black. That's what we knew. Even, even Northern Kingdom was doing the same thing. With the, with the uh, uh, AIM movement, the young, uh, the young lords, all of those were in Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters doing the same thing. Go ahead. Bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. So we realized that we're supposed to be standing on our feet as righteous men and righteous women. That's what we were doing. They weren't even allowing drugs even then. Having, having uh, 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 drives to get the dope out of our communities. That's what we were doing back then. Feeding our children and all that. A lot of good stuff was happening then. But they just did not have the connection to the Bible. Read. And the skin covered them above. Go ahead. But there was no breath in them. They did not have the Bible. But Esau said, I ain't waiting for them to get the Bible. Let me pump the dope in now to put them to sleep before they even wake up. So that's what put us back to sleep. Then came the 70s and the 80s. Crack hit Harlem wild in the 80s. Tore it up. 90s and all of this. So the, the onslaught to destroy Israel was at full force. Why? Because they saw that the potential of, of the children coming out of the 60s would have been excellent. Just think about that. The children coming out of that era without, without the government coming in, trying to jag Hoover and all those demons. If all of those smart children that came out of the era, man, we could have been a long way forward had it not been for that war against them. So now you think that there's not a war against us today? Yes. 
And when you allow yourselves to get caught up in it through your idleness, this is how evil sets back in. But this is not the group that's going to entertain that thing. We're going to get all that stuff straight. Read. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come forth the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So this is the breath of the Most High. Okay, the Bible began to, this is Elijah, the prophet, coming in full force now. Bringing that truth back and waking up. And that's why the 10th verse says what it says. Read verse 10. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet. An exceeding great army. Now let me show you how far this thing goes. Because now the order is coming in. The structure is coming in. The infrastructure. All of these things are coming into play to cause Israel to stand up. Give me verse. I'm going to just go right to the point. Give me verse uh, 20. Ezekiel chapter 37. Verse 19. Verse, verse 19. 19. Say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah. So all of this is happening. Remember I talked about the, Lord, the young lords, the aim and all of that? The Most High is bringing the prophecies about Northern Kingdom waking up as well. Read. And make them one stick. And they shall be one in my... And they, we shall be one nation. One, uh, make, make them one stick in thine hand. That's the 12 tribe sign. I don't call it a chart because a chart sounds like something somebody made up. This is the 12 tribes at the moment. We're reading it. So ain't nobody can't say that we made it up. It's telling you. The, the, he said, and on the... Uh, where's the part about the about right? In verse in verse 20. Yeah, read. And the sticks were... Where on thou writest, and the sticks, the wood wherein thou writest the tribes, go ahead, shall be in thy hand, shall be in the hand of the prophets teaching. Go ahead, before their eyes, before their eyes. I don't know what the hell is wrong with a coon that act like this ain't in the Bible. It says it shall be in their hand where the people can see the tribes. Read before their eyes, verse 21, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land, and I will make them one nation. That's what the Most High is going to do with the whole nation of Israel. This is how the planet Earth is going to get changed when this nation repents. So there's an effort to keep us from repenting. And that's when, when whenever we allow this evil to seep into our spirit to cause us to do wickedness to our brothers and sisters, this is when you have lost your damn mind. This is when you have lost your mind. And I don't know what's wrong with our brothers and sisters when they, when they play these doggone games, not even realizing that the nation of Israel is at stake when you don't do right as a woman, when you don't do right as a man, when you allow yourselves to be uh, entertaining foolishness and frolic, there's, you can, can you imagine the generations that will come from behind a bad decision today? One child f coming together from two, a man and a woman whose mind ain't right, can bring literal hell on this whole planet. That's how important it is that the, that the union be done right, that you men have your minds right, that you women have your minds right when you come together. Because the potential to create greatness is there as well as the potential to create damn straight up evil. So whenever we see what we see and we have to deal with it, we got to deal with it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.